Good morning or afternoon or evening, depending on where you're watching from. Today, we're going to be talking about using the power of the sun to cook things. And you may have seen on our thumbnail, we have an image of us trying to cook a, an egg in a pan with a magnifying glass. So we're going to do a little Mythbusters style episode on cooking an egg on the sidewalk today. And we'll also show you some fun things you can do with sun. But first, I want to say hello to those who are watching live. Hello to Science Mom Jamie, to Science Girl Sophia, to Esther and Ivan watching from Italy, to Bethany from Delaware, to Claire, Crystal, Marine, Pixel B8, to Paul and Jen Merlo from Ottawa, to McKenna, first day back, welcome, to Annerbon, to Jamie, to Nina, Harper. It is good to see you guys back here. We have a slightly shorter live stream today because we have kind of a special guest that we're going to bring on um, in about in about 15 minutes. Hello to Ethan from Georgia, to Harper from Texas, to Gabriel and Sophia from Florida. And I'm terribly worried that we're going to forget this, but what's happening on Friday, Science Mom? Oh, on Friday, we have an interview with a scientist. We are interviewing Dr. Robert Liu. He has done a lot of fascinating research at Harvard University on visualization and how we perceive the world. So Friday, 8 o'clock, we have um, a 20-minute chat with a scientist. So I'll be posting that on Patreon and on social media, too. I hope you'll join us for that. It's Friday at the you, same, same time as this. Same time as this. Yep. Friday, same time. Hello to Sophia from Clemen, Clemson, South Carolina. Hi to Rhea, Amber. Hello from Jas to Jasper from Georgia. Hey, Queen Donut, PPC Builders. Are you guys ready to talk a bit about heat? Because in a lot of parts of the world, everywhere in the Northern Hemisphere, it's heating up and it's getting hot because it's summertime. If you're watching from down under in Australia, then you're entering winter and it's getting cooler. But for the rest of us, it can get pretty hot. And one of the ways that I like to deal with the heat is to do some fun science experiments when it gets hot because it's not very pleasant to be outside right now in Las Vegas near where we live. But you can do some fun things like baking cookies in your car or building a solar oven. Or you can try cooking eggs on the sidewalk. Now, how many of you have heard the expression, it's hot enough to fry eggs on the sidewalk? I bet several of you have heard that before. I felt that hot. It's felt that hot before. I want you to just type, type T or F into the chat based on whether you think that's true or false. Can you actually crack an egg? Like if you go to Death Valley in California, where we have the record high temperatures most years, and let's say that it is 125 degrees Fahrenheit, Will you be able to cook an egg on the sidewalk? If you just crack an egg on the sidewalk, will it cook? Amy says false. Theodore says true. Larissa says true. Hello to Elliot and Rosa from Michigan. So in my entire life, have I ever felt 125 degrees? I, I believe one time when we were at Death Valley, the, the, the temperature gauge said 127. And yeah, that's just cr crazy hot. But here in Las Vegas, I've seen it get up to 120 on multiple occasions. So. Yeah. Seeing, seeing several falses now, but we're seeing a pretty good split. Some people are saying false, some people are saying true. There's a town not too far from where we live called... Oatman, Arizona. Oatman, Arizona. And every 4th of July, they have an egg cooking contest outside. And you cannot use any type of fuel. So using like a little gas stove is completely against the rule. No fire is allowed. And you have to cook your egg in 15 minutes. The albumum, the clear part of the egg, has to turn white. Um, I think the yolks can be semi-set. Right? I, I, I don't. I don't know all the rules. I don't. I don't know if they're actually on the sidewalk or if they put a pan there so it doesn't get quite as, as dirty. But, but nobody can cook an egg just by dropping it on the sidewalk. If you drop an egg on the sidewalk and just wait for it to cook, what you end up with is a mess. And we'll show you a slideshow in just a few minutes of some of our attempts. Everyone who enters this contest, they come with all sorts of extra materials to trap the heat. And one of the simplest ways that you can try cooking with heat is to make a solar oven. I've got one right here. We're going to show you how we made our own solar oven. So the concept is pretty simple, but there are a couple tricks that can help you make yours more effective. So we took a cardboard box and we taped down the front to make sure that it was all one box container. And then we so just no, cut. No air could escape. Yes, yeah, so we don't want air escaping. We want to trap the air and the heat inside here. And then I had a page protector that I thought would make a good plastic covering. But there's one more thing I did before we taped up the box that's pretty important. I put down newspaper as insulation. And on the sides here, 
I've got crumpled up newspaper to help insulate and keep some of that heat in. And then when I tucked this under, I also covered this with tin foil, aluminum foil, to shine extra light down in. Now, depending on how well insulated your solar oven is, and depending on the extra light that you're reflecting, that's gonna determine what you can cook in it. This little solar oven here is great for making nachos or s'mores, but when we tried baking cookies in here, it did not get hot enough because we didn't have enough light reflecting in. You really want to have, so this panel here that was covered in tin foil, where we were reflecting extra light in, you need to have four of those if you wanna get hot enough to be able to bake bread or bake cookies because you need to get pretty hot. But for melting, you know, making nachos or bean dip or other things that don't need to get quite as warm, this works really well. Uh, I was pretty impressed. I didn't yeah. think you, you could get it that hot. And yeah, I think if we'd had like high quality mirrors or- If you use, if you yeah, upgrade, the, upgrade to a mirror or make sure your aluminum is super, super shiny and smooth, that will increase how effective your solar oven is. Our aluminum foil was, repurposed and kind of crinkled. So it didn't didn't work quite as well, but the nachos turned out beautifully and it was really satisfying to see all that cheese melt and s'mores work really well in these they, as well, the marshmallows. They tasted pretty good too, so. <clears throat> now, making a solar oven is one way that you can do it, but you can also use your car. So let's let's pull up our slideshow and show them some of the some of the fun things we tried. And I mentioned last time that we live in the Mojave Desert. And then you guys sent in some fantastic demonstrations um, of deserts for us to guess what desert was which. So let's start off with a desert slideshow. We're gonna have seven images and see if you can guess which one is which. So this is the second largest polar desert on earth. Polar bears live here and ice covered water where they like to hunt for seals. What desert is it, Math Dad? Well, so the, the, the polar desert kind of tells us this has to be Arctic, an Arctic desert. Um, now, there are different land masses up in the Arctic, so I'm not actually sure if this is just one specific desert. Uh, Ellison, I, I think it's probably just referring to all the Arctic as, as one desert region, because it's, it's certainly... Yeah, different parts of the is. Arctic get more precipitation than others, but large parts of the Arctic are really quite dry. And the only reason that they're covered in ice is because the water that falls there doesn't melt. And the polar bears give it away because yeah. you have a North Pole, you've got the polar bears, and South Pole, down, down there penguins. you've got penguins. And we would not have penguins if we had polar bears. So. <laughs> this is true. Noah had a great set of clues. So hint one, I'm located between a mountain range and an ocean. <gasps> this narrows it down because there are only a couple coastal deserts. Hint two, I'm not as big as the deserts like the Kalahari or the Sahara. And I have lots of small, active, but non-troublesome volcanoes. I love these clues. Okay, so this has, like that long and narrow and between mountain ranges, like that's gotta be the Andes. It's, it's, yeah. This has gotta be like Chile. Right? Yeah, yeah, the Atacama Desert or Atacama. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Down south, that's what this one is. And then I don't, we forgot to write down the clues for this one. Um, No, actually th th this one has a special one. So this was Adeline's, um, so yeah, from from the the art prompt. Uh oh, where'd that link go? Oh, it's down. It's down lower. That oh one? yeah. The, the, sorry. sorry. The, 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 these these two were linked. So I'm gonna actually have to open up. Uh oh. Open link. Okay, but now, huh? You can keep talking, and we'll try to figure out how to get there because they're not seeing that. So this. Adeline built a fantastic little scratch animation that we're gonna share with you as soon as we open up this, this tab. And you can actually see a bat, which is one of my favorite animals, flying in the air, All right. and a coyote. Yeah, so if you guys haven't used Scratch before, it's a really cool program. And Adeline built this off the prompt that I thought it was so cool that we'd better share it. So I'm gonna click on this green flag. Hi, I pollinate these pretty saguaro cactus flowers. The state flowers of Arizona. Uh -huh. Which desert am I in? Ooh. So then and the, the bat just flies back and forth. But she's Isn't got this awesome? animated, and yeah, they had a dialogue. So I, I thought this was really well done. And this is the Sonoran Desert, which we talked about last week when we did our Painting with a Scientist episode. C can I ask you about that? So we live in the Mojave Desert. Yes. That's the Sonoran Desert. Like, what's 
Is, is there non-desert in between or how, how, how do the, we? The Sonoran and the Mojave and the Chihuahuan deserts, they really kind of merge together. There is a little bit of overlap, but the amount of precipitation get they get and the plants and animals that they get are really different between the three deserts. And so it really makes sense to divide them up because you don't see saguaro cacti in the Mojave Desert. And then you don't have, you know, there, there's there's some overlap with plants that you'll find in all three. Oh, so last week, someone had a great question. They asked, is there a, one plant that you can find in any desert? And I did a little bit of research and the answer is no. Really? This this was fascinating. So if, if we discount weeds that human beings transport around, because there are certain weeds that you could probably find all over the world because we have been carriers for those little tiny weeds and we've moved them places. But if you get rid of weeds and you just say, okay, we're not gonna talk about little invasive species that humans have moved around. Is there a desert plant that grows in all deserts? There actually is not. They've mm -hmm. been isolated from each other for so long and their environments are so harsh. You have very similar plants in every desert. You have cacti in every desert, but you don't have the same species of cacti cacti in any single in, in all of the deserts which is yeah, fascinating but that is that kind of makes a lot of sense uh, we went to hawaii and we, went, we were learning about what it was like there just a few hundred years ago they had a lot fewer uh, plants and animals but that things like ants there were no ants on the entire island well now the whole island's covered in ants and that's because we brought them yep. with and it's kind of sad because it's nice not but having ants ant oh i don't know about that ants are cool except unless they're fire ants but what's sad is that we brought mosquitoes to Hawaii. There used to be no mosquitoes. So. Yeah. All right. Well, thank, thanks, Adeline, for that one. All right. And then Rishab. The coldest desert on Earth made of ice sheets, iceberg, and glaciers. And we've got penguins there. This is but, Antarctica. That's right. The penguins are giving that one away for sure. And then, yes, that is crazy cold. I think Antarctica would be fun to visit for like 10 minutes. <laughs> and then that, that, that'd be enough for me. All depends on the equipment you have, right? And then Nina, this is fantastic. This one totally stumped me. I wasn't sure what it was. We had to look it up. So sand only covers 5% of this desert. It's the fifth largest desert in the world. And in the summer, it can get incredibly hot. And this clue was fantastic. A runner ran with a dog, did an ultra marathon across this desert. So an ultra marathon is like a 100 mile yeah. race. And but this dog kind of joined up, and was somewhat famous for it. And the name of the desert is the Victorian. <laughs> Desert, is it right? Oh, I thought it was the Gobi. Oh no. This, this is the Gobi. This Gobi is the Desert. Gobi. This is the Gobi. There's a different <laughs> one that's the Victorian. <laughs> By the time we went through all the, the slideshows this morning, Math Dad was like, we're not gonna remember these. And I said, Oh, we will. And then I was the first one to make a mistake. That's right. <laughs> that was an easier one too. <laughs> all right, here we have Ivan. Here, here are his clues. The name of this desert resembles an American animated sitcom. And this desert has the longest parallel dunes in the world. Some dunes are 200 kilometers long. Which is astounding. I, I can't even imagine. Yeah. So, do you know what this is, Science Mom? This one is the Simpson Desert in Australia. Yes, indeed. So, yeah. Thanks for the fact that, that animated American sitcom helped a lot. Good. All, All right. right. Now, time to talk a little bit about experiments that you can do with the sun. So, one of the most interesting, in my opinion, is to take a magnifying glass and then move it up and down to see how the light changes. And if you're outside, the light passing through this magnifying glass is not just visible light. You also have infrared light, you have heat. And when you adjust it so that all of that visible light and the heat is focused on a single point, there is a exponential increase in the power and the heat that you have. And you will see a bright spot. I recommend having sunglasses on if you're trying this because that bright spot, you'll be seeing spots when you blink it. It's really, really bright. Yeah. And then you need to have, if you're trying to do it on a white piece of paper and it's completely white, you'll have to hold that magnifying glass for a long time before you see a burn start. But if you have a little spot of black, like some ink, you see that smoke start right there? I'm getting a little bit of smoke now. And if you can just hold it over some black ink, it will start to burn. And depending on how hot it is, and depending on how sunny it is, that will determine how quickly you're able to start a little fire on a piece of paper. If we, if we had a bigger black spot, and all, just took a black marker, and it, that, that would be enough to mm -hmm. get, this thing would be on fire by now. Oh yeah, there is a burn mark. We did get a there. little burn mark. Now, quick safety precaution. If you want to try this, if you have never 
tried using a magnifying glass to start a little fire. It is a cool science experiment, but any time that we have fire, what kind of safety precautions do we need to have? Well, a way to put it out. That's right. Make sure you have a way to put it out. Maybe some make sure eyewear and yeah, gloves, so we're not getting burned. I'm in out in the summer heat now. That might not be a bad idea. Anyway. And and then make sure that you're not somewhere where if you if it's the fire got a little bit bigger than you expected, that it would like catch on some dry leaves. So you want to do it like on the sidewalk or somewhere where there's not any dry leaves around. Yeah. Now usually the you know it doesn't start burning crazy fast. Usually you'll just get a big black spot on paper. It all depends on how hot it is though. But adult supervision for sure. Uh, yes. could, could, could this burn your skin? Yes. So you want to mm. you want to be careful. You don't want to ever have your hand underneath because you'll you'll feel it gets really hot. So the first thing we wanted to, to try with cookies, we're thinking, okay, we want to be make sure we can eat these. So we looked up a recipe for cookies that allowed us to do use no eggs because we didn't want to have to worry about salmonella. And, and our, our egg-free cookies did not like squish down. They just stayed like <laughs> they stayed like those little balls of dough, even when they were fully cooked. So well, they didn't work out so well. Right. So what what we discovered is that you should probably pick a cookie recipe where you would actually eat the cookies. And, <laughs> and we, we just thought, we just looked one up. Hey, that looks okay. Well, we actually tried this in our oven with this recipe, and they still didn't change shape, and they didn't cook very well. They, they were not very good cookies. So F Full disclosure, it was a, a family project that was kind of rushed, and kids were measuring. And, yeah, we, we may have messed up the recipe. The recipe might be okay. It may have been user error. <laughs> maybe, so maybe, but then we, take number two. We're like, okay, we've got to use some better cookie dough so that we, we can't blame it on on the dough. On, oh yeah. So we, this, these ones had eggs. So and, you see, they, they start out. We just sat them in the dashboard of the car. The car was facing the sun, and this is a really important reminder too of why you should never leave a, a dog or a person inside a car when it's parked in the sun because it can feel like it's not too hot outside, but inside the car. Oh my goodness, within five minutes, how hot was it inside our car? It was it was pushing 120 it was, degrees it within five minutes. Our, our thermometers wouldn't go that high, so <laughs> we actually don't know. But yeah, it, it, it's miserable to be in a hot car. I think we've all been there before, or we're lucky if we haven't. So yeah, these are just pictures of the cookies every, on our car dashboard. Every 10 minutes, and you see they spread out nicely. Now to get cookies to cook in the car, I recommend it being, it works best if it's over 110 degrees Fahrenheit, but it does take longer in the car than it does in the oven. So in the car, it's gonna take, and you can see that the one that is on the black construction paper, um, we it's having, it has grease butter coming out of it. And that's what that little ring of circle is. Yeah, and, now and I, so did the cookies actually work out for us? We actually stopped after like 45 minutes and they were not yet done. And so we finished them in the oven with real fast because we had an appointment to um, to go do something that we'll tell you about in just a few minutes. It's a surprise, but very exciting. All right, now eggs. This is what happens if you just drop eggs on the sidewalk. You can see our first two pictures here. They look terrible. You so end up with a mess. Let me, let me correct you there. Not on the sidewalk. <laughs> these are in pans. We left these pans outside where it was, we let them warm up, get nice and hot. We left the eggs outside where they would get warmed by the sun so that we weren't dropping cold eggs on there because we, we need them to get up to a higher temperature. Yeah. We wanted to maximize our chances for success. And, so, uh, and if you put it on the sidewalk, it's gonna get terribly messy. Don't do it, you, you wouldn't wanna eat it. It's a lose-lose situation altogether. And our sidewalk's awfully light in color. It's not gonna get as hot as a dark pan. And the sidewalk's also not as conductive. So if one part of the pan gets hot, that heat is gonna transfer and the whole entire pan will get hot. So that's because it's metal? Mm -hmm, because it's metal, it transfers heat really well. But if you take a block of concrete and you heat up one corner of the concrete, that other corner of the concrete that's just you know maybe six inches away is actually not gonna get as hot. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to try cooking, cooking an egg in the summertime using the sun, a pan, a dark colored pan is your best bet. It's gonna work much better than the sidewalk. But you can see, even with our first two pans, just setting out in the sun, they were so hot, I couldn't touch them with my, my hands without feeling like I was gonna get burned. I had to use a hot pad to pick up them up. Even the handles were too hot to touch. But did our eggs cook? No, they like dehydrated yeah. into this like weird mess. The white kind of cooked after it dehydrated, but mostly they just dried out. But the third picture is one where we had a clear glass lid over the pan. And so again, we're creating kind of like a solar oven because the heat comes through the glass and then it's trapped inside and it heats up more. And that one almost worked. 
it was still just like a little bit jiggly, but you can see that the white cooked. That's right. And unfortunately, the yolk broke. Oh, go back. Just a second. Oh. So it's more talking about eggs. So okay. one thing we tried was, well, what if we get out the magnifying glass? Can we then cook the egg? And the answer there is... Yes, but it's very time consuming. Yeah, re really slow. Like Because yeah. you, you can only do like a spot that big at a time. And so you have to move over the egg in like, you know, three minutes here three minutes there, three minutes there, like bit by bit, you could get it to cook, but it would right. take a long time. So an interesting thing about these eggs though, is that they've got the yolk and you've got the albumin, the, the white part of it. And to cook them, these proteins can have to break down. And the yolk actually, the, those proteins will break down at a slightly lower temperature. And whereas the, the whites needed a higher temperature, depending on which proteins we're talking about. But so what I had read is that we need to be like 158, 160 degrees if we really want to cook an egg, or maybe even more for the white. And unfortunately, most sidewalks, you're looking at temperatures of 145, 150, you're kind of maxing out there. Yeah, so with a sidewalk, you're just never going to have the sidewalk get quite hot enough to cook the egg. And then when you drop the egg on it, the egg is not going to be 150 degrees. Even if you've left the egg outside and it's warmed up at best, if it's like 110 outside, your egg might be 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So then when you crack it on it, it cools that sidewalk down and that bit of sidewalk underneath the egg cools down. So you actually cannot cook an egg on the sidewalk unless you have like a whole bunch of mirrors set up focusing extra light on it. That's the only way. Yeah, but that would be messy anyway. So it I, would be. I, I don't know why you'd want to. A pan, a pan is the better way to go. So let it be written. So let it be done. Now, this next experiment we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you real quick, and then we're actually gonna go outside and do it live, because this one is really cool. Will you show them the balloon math, Dad? All right. So what I have here is a balloon. Two balloons. Two balloons, actually. I have a blue balloon blown up inside of a white balloon, and we're gonna see if we can pop this guy using a magnifying glass. But what we've seen is light colors don't absorb heat. They don't just don't absorb that, Dark that light. Dark colors that heat. do. So we're gonna pop the blue balloon. Sorry, I keep talking over you. Oh, this is good. I'm, we're gonna pop the blue balloon without popping the white balloon. That, that, that's the goal. Is it possible? Is it gonna work? I'm not sure. So one thing I didn't do this time, I, I didn't actually put any air in between them. So Ooh. we'll see if that there's a Find consequence. Out. Here in this video, we have a dark balloon inside of a lighter colored balloon. It's red inside of yellow. Okay. And I did put a smidgen of air in between them. So let's see what happens. So Science Mom focuses. Focuses the light. The light. And they wouldn't know how long we would have to wait or whether or not it would, would actually work. <laughs> and then I was so surprised. Whoops. I was so surprised I dropped it. I was like, ah, it worked. All right. So. All right let's, um, let's, oh. All right. We are going to take this balloon, we're gonna walk outside and we're gonna see, can we do this again? So I will carry these two items if you will carry the laptop. Okay, here we go. And then I will give you a hint about our special guest that we will bring on after we pop our balloon. Oh, I got caught in something, Math Dad. Uh oh. Our ethernet cable. <laughs> is as long so our kids have wanted a dog for as long well that's not a small hint <laughs> <laughs> that's not a small hint you're right our kids have wanted a dog for as long as they've been able to talk um and math dad and i always said no 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 all these reasons why but then yesterday we changed our mind and so we will show you the newest member of our family in a few minutes all right can you give me a little more slack on that cord? Yeah. Here we are. All right. Let's see if it works, Math Dad. Okay, so I've got that sun. All right, got to get the beam. Woo! Ho, 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 ho! <laughs> it worked. So the blue balloon popped, and the white balloon is still intact. Now, would this white balloon pop as well? I, I I do see some slightly black marks on it, but boy, I think this would have lasted a long time, and that might just be due to the blue balloon heating up there. I might be able to shine this all day long. 
Well, we'll try for just a second. If you've ever accidentally, if you've left balloons in your car on a hot day and then come back, most of the time the balloons will pop because as the gas heats up inside, it expands and forces, um, puts extra pressure on them. But yeah, that white balloon is pretty pop resistant compared to the blue one. The blue one popped really fast. And speaking of heat, our our laptop is now getting quite warm, so I think okay. we may want to. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing any marks on it now, so the, the black mark must have just been from the blue balloon inside. That's pretty remarkable. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right, back through the hallway of darkness, also known as the laundry room. And I see some comments. Um, people noticed our daughter made a little cameo coming coming through. She wanted to go and check on the newest member of our family. So will you will you go and, and grab? Yep. All right. Let's talk real fast about Animal Camp, and then we'll show you the new animal member of our family. You want to hit the rest of the slideshow? Uh, we'll do slideshow after okay. afterwards. So I am so excited for Animal Camp, you guys. We have been... We just finalized our supply list, and we are doing a giveaway today. So this this is an animal summer camp that's yes. going to run from July 6th through July 10th. So we two hours a day. We're going to go through the animal kingdom to talk about the, the just amazing world of an animals. Math Dad has made amazing songs. We have really fun crafts and a deep dive to explore just amazing facts. And we are doing a giveaway today where we are giving away all the supplies for animal camp, plus some kind of bonus supplies that are not required for camp, but that just might make it more fun. We've got some great books and we're doing one is through a Google form. And do you have the link to that Google form handy? I'm going to have Maz Dad drop it in the chat real fast. So you can enter through a Google form or you can enter on Facebook or on Instagram. And I'm going to post those as soon as our live stream finishes. Well, this, so the, the, this form is actually the... We're giving out some scholarships to, to camp. So for but, every 10 registrations we get, we will yeah, award a scholarship to someone who wasn't able to afford to come to camp on their own. And But for three lucky people, they're going to get a scholarship to come to camp and they're going to get the supplies to do, to do everything in camp. So thank you so much to everyone who has registered for camp. And if you haven't yet, I hope you'll check it out and please help us share it because the more people who register, the more scholarships we'll be able to give out. And we really want as many people who want to come to be able to come because things are kind of tough right now. And being able to give these scholarships out really makes us happy. All right. right. Are you guys ready to meet our newest? <laughs> Here is the newest member of our family. Mm. He is Isn't so he adorable? So what, what type of dog is he? So he is a poodle. He's part poodle. And will get to be about 15 pounds. He's he's kind of a, a little mix what, mixed breed. Ha Havanese is it? Yeah, his his one parent was Havanese, the other parent was a poodle. So they call it a have a poo. Uh, I call it a have a poodle. <laughs> <laughs> a have or a have a doodle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, we have five potential names, and I would love your guys' input on what his name should be because we are a little stumped. So possibility number one is that he could be named Copernicus. And we could call him Copper for short. Mm -hmm. I like that. Possibility number two is that he could be named Archimedes. And we could call him Archie for short. You can see that Science Daughter doesn't really like those two names. Two copycat names. Archie from the Archie series and Archimedes from a movie. <laughs> <laughs> and option number three is Lopin. We like the name Lopin. My favorite book. And option number four is Patches. A very good series. And then do you want to do you want to give a name suggestion? I kind of like William. William. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Do you want to take him back so to the if you, if you have name suggestions, drop them in the chat for us because we, we still haven't figured this out. We're, we've been walking around like proud new parents all morning. Oh, he moved. He moved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. He's... Yeah, he's so cute. You'll definitely see more more of him in Animal Camp. So let me just read some of these that have come in. Um, all right. Oreo. Okay. Spock, Oreo. We noticed Oreo. this Oreo, and that's what my, our other daughter, that's her favorite name. N Newton, Lobbit, Patches, Cleo, Math Dig. Math Lupin, Dog. Math Dog, yeah. Uh, okay, I got Leo. Max. So, and, and some people like, ooh, Mozart. Mozart. I like that too. Willow, Benny. Spose, Oreo, Mo, more Cleo, Math Dog. All right, 
like William. Oh, and Michelle, they just got a dog and named him Javier Bayes. I, 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 I like that. Beethoven. <laughs> Tyson, these are great. And we, we will be looking through to look at all the name suggestions because that's Kiki. that's our, our job is to decide on a name in the next day or two. That's right. So I think I think Animal Camp really got us in the, the animal mood here. So we It did. Although for about for about three years, one of our kids in particular has been talking nonstop about wanting a dog. Um so <laughs> I did see someone ask, what's the website for the animal camp? Let me let me throw up a banner really fast. So it, the URL is not the most um, easily like to write down and click, but um, I'll ask that one of our moderators to please copy that and put it in the chat. Um, and you can find it from social media as well. Math Dad's going to copy it right now and put it in the chat as well. So we will drop that link in the chat. And again, um, science camp. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. It's $25 per family. And again, if you if the $25 per family is not accessible to you, we do have these scholarships and we're doing a, a giveaway today. So check Facebook, check Instagram, or um, click on that form that we that we shared earlier and you can enter via the form too. So if you're not on social media, I don't want to like force you to be on social media, you can use the form and I will I will post announcement about all of those today. All right. All right, last but not least, we have a few more deserts to share. And I will tell you guys, so every every summer, I think about moving from Las Vegas because it's so hot and doing these two live streams for you guys, talking about deserts last week and then talking about just the fun experiments you could do with heat this week, they sort of helped me feel better about being here in well, the that, summertime. This is good because yeah, I constantly come in and I look at her browser and say, bed and breakfast. Or, math, math where, where can I move? <laughs> She's, she has literally Alaska. applied for jobs for me at other places <laughs> without even telling me because uh, she, she gets so tired of the sun. So <clears throat> Yeah, every, every June I go through a phase where I'm like, oh, this is hard. <laughs> All right. By Sophia, we have clue number one, this desert meets the Atlantic Ocean. Clue number two, one of the countries this desert bordered on, is bordered on has almost the same name. This is an excellent clue. Oh. Which desert is it? Of the Atlantic. I'll give you a hint. It's in Africa. Well, I mean, you got the Sahara and the Kalahari, but they don't sound like. Nope. The Namib Desert. The Nam oh, Namib. Namibia. Namibia. Yeah. yeah. So nicely done, Sophia. And then Charlotte, almost six. The camel in this desert has two humps. <gasps> Mummies have been found in this desert, and it's the Silk Road goes through part of this desert. Okay, so, so camel has two humps. There are two types of camels. There's the dromedary mm -hmm. and the Bactrian. And the Bactrian. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know which one of those has the two humps. Um, okay, do you know the answer to this one? <laughs> we need to have the chat open to help us out. I think it's the Gobi Desert. No. No, the, it's not the Gobi Desert. It's in, it's in Asia. It's in Asia. Help us out in the chat. Oh, th this one was tough. I'd never heard of it before. I I looked at the solution. Bactrian Desert. This is the ba Bactrian Camel. Is the is the it's, it's, <laughs> it's not it's the, <laughs> which is like a desert. So no, to, to, I think it started with an M. But it, it was some desert I hadn't heard of. So so Charlotte to totally stumped us on on Facebook when she when she posted this. But also I don't I don't remember. It wasn't a desert that I was familiar with. So way to go, Charlotte. I think that's I, I, like a I think it started with, with an M. And this was literally the one Mongolian where I Mongolian Desert. Is it Mongolian Desert? It wasn't Mongolian. Well, it had a different name. But I, I think we're looking at, yeah. It's... So um, I'll, I'll tell you guys, I was, I was, a, I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night because I was <laughs> next to the crate in our living room by a puppy who only had to go to the bathroom once last night. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, our apologies. We can't remember that one. Yeah, so you, you know, All it's right. a good one. It's got it's, it's a good one. one. All right, Sophia. So oh, we're talking about Mirage here, the Mirage Fool. You. So this is the largest hot desert in the world, and it has grown ten percent larger Ooh. than it was a century ago, which I, I certainly had no idea about. So largest hot desert in the world has got to be the Sahara. That's uh, what I think. Yeah, th th this this has to be the Sahara Desert. Um, so. Th th this is the iconic desert that we think of when we think about crazy big deserts or yeah, when movies are and filming it, de these desert scenes. Yeah, And it's actually an important part of the world's ecosystem because the sand from the Sahara blows across the ocean 
and influences, it actually influences the climate of the entire Americas. So it helps with, helps with kind of almost, you can almost think of it as like fertilizing the rainforest in a way, although that may be a slight oversimplification. <laughs> and there's a huge plume of dust coming off the Sahara right now, which means that over the next week or two, we actually should see sunsets that are a little more colorful because there's gonna be more particulate matter in the air. Oh, that's pretty cool, yeah. All right, and that is the end of our slideshow. Thank you so much to those of you guys who, who actually have followed up on the challenge and, and stumped us. And yeah, yeah the, the, these riddles are, are fun and the artwork is just great. Yeah, yeah. Talamacan Desert. Awesome. So Science Mom Amber came to the rescue for us. The Silk Road Desert was the Talamacan Desert. Yeah, I don't, know that, I don't know that I'm familiar with that one at all. But. Awesome. Thank you. And that doesn't start with an M, so that, that's my bet. Yep. <laughs> Misleading us. <laughs> Making it extra hard. We, we will take just a couple quick Q and A, and then we are going to wrap up because we've got some we've got some things to do to get ready for Animal Camp to get our giveaway ready, which I'm really excited about. And please, when we post the giveaway on Facebook and Instagram, if you guys can help us share those posts and comment on them, that would be a huge help to us so that we could share our Animal Camp with more people. So. Oh, and Queen Dona asks, when will I post the supply list for Animal Camp? Today. So when I do the giveaway post, I will also post the complete supply list. And we have a, a short on time version that will have links to where you can just purchase everything easily. And then we have a DIY version where I have some suggestions. So for example, like a little butterfly habitat, you can buy one online, but you can also make your own just from a Tupperware and poking holes in the top. So I, I have a couple suggestions for just different, um, different versions of the supply list. Amy asks, what's my favorite desert? Oh, that is a good mm -hmm. question. So I'm partial to the Mojave because I live in the Mojave and I'm more familiar with its plants and animals, but I have to say that I really like the Sonoran Desert. Um, the few times we've been to Arizona, I've just been amazed by, by how comparatively lush and green it is. And I think the whole entire um, the ecosystem built around the saguaro cacti is just incredible. I'm going to say the Kalahari. You're going to say the Kalahari? Yeah, I, I, just having seen it in movies, like The Gods Must Be Crazy is a really fun movie where they, they see it. And man, yeah, just a Africa is a whole different ball game than, than what we're used to here. And there are yeah. more, more poisonous snakes in the Kalahari than the Mojave or the Sonoran. I did not know that. <laughs> but that's a, that, that is a great one, too. Um, and then Raina asked, can we put the link to the supply list in the chat? I don't have it ready yet, but um, I will I will be posting it everywhere I can in about an hour or so. Yeah, uh, okay. Science Mom has a multiplier <laughs> of three. So whatever <laughs> time frame she estimates, you always have to multiply it by three. All right, in so, three hours, yeah. you will find the supply list online. Thanks, Math Dad. You're welcome. And two more questions. Oh, this is a great one from Sophia. What is your favorite desert animal? Math, I'm gonna make you answer first and then I'm gonna go. This oh. one's a great one. So we've, we've got our pet Delta that we have shared the before. Tortoise. Well, no, well, Daisy, or sorry, oh. our desert tortoise. Boy, maybe I should pick the desert tortoise. Yeah, no, I actually go with the, the, Our tortoise is fun to watch and she likes to try to sneak into our house. It's kind of funny if we leave our back door open, she will Try to get in. in, and then she motors around the house slowly, but she doesn't stop. It's it's really fun. Okay, I'll say desert tortoise. And desert tortoises are also uh, an important species for lots of other animals because they dig burrows, and they're really good at digging burrows. That's how they keep cool in the summertime, and that's how they avoid freezing in the wintertime. And a lot of other animals benefit from those burrows and use those as habitat. So they're kind of a keystone species of the desert. I'm actually going to pick a scorpion. I'll tell mm -hmm. you three reasons why I like scorpions. So number one. Yes, scorpions can be a little scary, and there's certain types that are venomous where you don't want to get stung by them. But the native des desert scorpions that we have here, their sting is no more dangerous than a bee sting. It's possible if you get stung several times, you could develop allergies, just like people develop allergies to bee stings, and that would be dangerous. But for most people, it's not dangerous to get stung by a desert hairy scorpion. And they are such cool animals. They provide really important insect control. They also dig burrows that other animals and insects can use in the desert. And they glow green under UV light, which I think is just really cool. Sometimes Good. scorpions get a bad rap. People think they're really aggressive, but they're actually not. They're quite cautious because they live in such a harsh environment. They have to be careful and conserve their resources. And so if you start kind of messing around with a scorpion, their first defense is that they want to hide. They'll try and hide. 
And then if you keep messing around with them, then they might they might sting you if they feel threatened. But their their primary motivation is to run and get away. Some scorpions that were dangerous, right? Yes, yes. And okay. there's there's a species in the Middle East that is that is very poisonous. The Arizona bark scorpion here that we um, that we have that small one that's also kind of a nasty one. But the the native ones, the giant hairy desert scorpions, those are amazing. I think they're really cool. All right, one more present. I'm just gonna go with with favorites here. Do I have a favorite right. desert plant? I do. It's the creosote bush. Creosote bushes are so cool. And there is a creosote bush in California that is estimated to be more than 10,000 years old. And they actually will grow these clonal colonies where they kind of clone themselves and they grow out in a ring. And you can see these creosotes as rings. And when you go out into the desert, if you look long enough, you'll be able to see like a big creosote bush and then one where the center has died and that starts going out in a ring. And the bigger the ring gets, the older the creosote bush is. I was going to say, saguaro cactus. That's another great one. That's another great one. All right. Last song. <laughs> well, or la sorry, last, we're last getting comment. We're for songs here. Do the centipede in the song. <clears throat> okay. So from, for math camp, or not math camp, for animal camp, Math Dad came up with all these animal songs, and you can sing them together as a big round, and it sounds so awesome. I'm really excited about it, and he'll sing you the centipede one. Notice the centipede doesn't wear shoes. Laces confuse him and give him the blues. So it's a nice, nice, quick, fun, short song, and there are nine other ones that can go along with it. And if you get 10 people singing, they can you can sing the whole entire round together. <laughs> a lot of fun. Thank you for joining us today, you guys. And we will see you again on Friday with our interview with a scientist. And then we'll be back next Wednesday um, for another live stream like this one. And then the week following that is Animal Camp. And Raina <laughs> wants you to sing the song you don't know the words to. I'm singing I'm a song I don't know the words. I don't know the words to this song. I'm singing it loud and I'm singing it long, but I don't know the words to this song. No, I don't know the words to this song. So, so I think Science Mom went to, to show off somebody one more time. So, so, so somebody wants to say goodbye. So. All right. We will tell you guys this guy's little name next Wednesday. Thank you for your suggestions, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>